the software engineering industry is very unique in that developers and companies just openly share their intellectual property. Like right now, I can go see what cutting edge technology the very bright engineers at Google are working on and I can see Angular in just all of its glory. What's great about this is you can actually see the code for the project. So when a company creates one of the worst frameworks in existence, you can go learn from their blunders. And almost all open source projects use some form of version control, so you can actually go back in time and see the progress of the project. So I went back 9,000 commits on the AngularJS project to see where it all went wrong and found some commits my ex-grandma made in 1969, who I had to disown unfortunately after finding out she contributed to Angular. Um, but I can also see a lo what looks like the start of the project in 2010. If you wanted to, you could actually see the code at each one of these points. But I don't actually want to give myself any nightmares today, so we're going to go ahead and skip that part. The go-to place to host your open source code has become GitHub at least for the web development community. Now there are other options like GitLab and I suppose Bitbucket is also kind of an option, but you only ever see that being used when companies don't give you another option. It's kind of like asking a kid whether he wants to go eat at Stacy's Salad Buffet or McDonald's, except your company doesn't actually give you a choice and they're just forcing arugula down your throat. Developers don't want to touch Bitbucket with a 10 foot pole and some of that is PTSD from Jira and some of it is just Bitbucket used to suck and I don't know, maybe it still sucks, but I had to block it at the DNS level after the uh, incident. GitLab is actually pretty good, but they came after GitHub and then they just kind of decided not to compete with them on the community aspects and just went after those juicy enterprise whales. Now, developers aren't just sticking their code on GitHub so you can admire it, although that kind of is part of it, but also they want you to use it and also contribute back to it. Sometimes developers are big poopy heads and put restrictive licenses on their code, but that's pretty uncommon and most of the time you are just free to use it in your own projects. And in fact, it is pretty common to be using a lot of open source code. In fact, I would say most games or websites or apps, pretty much any piece of software has more code written by strangers on the internet than code written by the main developers. It's also kind of an exponential thing. Like you might think, yeah, I'm just using this code from this guy over here, but then that guy is using code from these two guys over here who are then using code from these four over there. And the next thing you know, you're depending on like 20 other guys. Using other people's code in the JavaScript world is probably the most extreme example of this. And there's this little website that I like to use to visualize this where you put in a name of an NPM package and it will show you a graph of all the other packages it relies on. So you might only use Express, but under the hood, you're actually relying on like 52 other packages. Using open source code is a double edged sword. It allows you to create things much faster and create things you'd never be able to without it. But at the same time, you are opening yourself up and increasing the surface area where bugs can be introduced. All it takes is one out of the 600 developers who just wrote some code that you rely on to have a mouse slip when they are copy pasting code from Stack Overflow and introducing a bug in their code which then introduces a bug in this other guy's code, which then changes the behavior over here. And then next thing you know, you're up at 2 a.m. on Saturday sipping cold coffee because production's down. Now that you're excited to start using some open source code, let's talk about how you actually decide which one to use in your project because developers like to reinvent the wheel and there's like five different ways to figure out if a number is even. The most obvious way is to just look at the code, but this can be kind of tedious and sometimes you don't like what you see. So an alternative is to see how many people have starred a project and then pick the one with the most stars. For example, React.js has 151,000 stars compared to Angular's measly 63K. So we can conclude that React.js is a better framework. This doesn't always work. Vue.js kind of has a lot of stars. So whenever you're unhappy with the results, you can use this other formula that I just made up where you take the number of stars and you divide it by the number of tags. And then doing that, React.js is back in first place. A question I hear newer developers ask is whether it's worth it to contribute to open source. And I think the answer is maybe because it's very similar to an unpaid internship. You are doing free labor in exchange or in the hopes of building your network or gaining some experience. 
And some people think that is just incredibly dumb and others think it is a great way to springboard your career. If it's something you are interested in, I definitely think it is worth trying because it can just lead to opportunities. But personally, contributing to open source has never really appealed to me. I'd rather just kind of build my own open source project. And even that doesn't really excite me that much. The dream when you open source your code is for other people to help make it great. And this happens to some extent, but it takes a lot of careful work to maintain and to keep the project from divulging into a complete dumpster fire. Because some developers get very entitled when it comes to open source and they just kind of demand features to be built from the maintainer and they want the code to be a certain way and they just kind of try to grasp hold and just take the project and all while offering no help of course, they are just you know creating issues and then they get super upset at you when you refuse to implement it. So yeah, no thank you. Maintaining an open source project is a totally different beast than just writing open source code. You have to deal with all this other crap and most of the time you're just totally uncompensated and it just feels like you are spending all your free time just managing these entitled brats. Before you can actually get to this point, you have to have people actually using your project. And so some of you may have uploaded your code to GitHub, but then no one actually tried it. So what I want to do is give you a few tips on how to get your project off the ground. Stars are important and you probably have zero of them right now. So we need to increase that number. And the most obvious way to do this is say posting on Reddit or you know going to a meetup and talking or even sharing on social media. But what I wanna to do today is share with you a secret technique called the star unstar method. How it works is you find someone else's code who has zero stars and then you give that a star and then you create an issue and you're like, hey, can you star my project back? And then you wait for that to happen and when it does, you unstar and delete your issue. That way you do not look like a spammer. Using this technique, I was able to get my code up to three stars. One for my mom and two for my sister who for some reason had two GitHub accounts. A few days later, my GitHub account got banned, but it was definitely worth it for the short period of time where I experienced open source fame. You know what, I'm feeling generous today, so I wanna give you two bonus tips that you can use to just build credibility for your code. And the first one is to make sure to include a logo in your readme. Pretty much all serious projects have them, and it doesn't even matter what you have there. It can be a pumpkin spice latte for all I care, as long as there is some graphic whatsoever. Secondly, take a look at these commit messages and tell me if you want to use this code. The answer is no. It's way too bland and boring. Now take a look at these commit messages. Much better, eh? An emoji can go a very long way. You now have the requisite knowledge to become open source famous, so don't forget to credit me in your readme when you reach three stars. Also, don't forget to tune in next week where we'll be talking about the average salary of open source engineers, which may or may not be zero dollars. Also, I wanna give a big thanks to Alina who came up with the first part of the title of this video, unless I change it, which I may very well do, but either way, thank you, Alina.